Valhalla is a bar set in a dystopian future at Glitch City, a city that is run by mega corporations and is full of corruption. Valhalla is a place to get away from the noise of the city. In this bar, you'll find Jill, a bartender who's just trying to get by and is dealing with her past experiences. Valhalla is a story-oriented game, and if that isn't the slightest bit interesting to you, then I recommend you stay away from this game. There really isn't much in the form of gameplay, as you could probably tell by the footage in the background, but that isn't the focus of the game, so it's not really a bad thing. Besides, the story makes up in spades for lack of good gameplay. Trust me. Welcome to Valhalla. Valhalla's art style is very much inspired by the 32-bit generation of the 80s, evident from the way shadows are drawn on the sprites with an almost dithered effect in order to show a fade. Animations and drawings are well done, whether it's just the cat boomer's ears moving or the design of the bar, you can tell that quite a bit of work went into both preserving the art style and trying to make this world feel as immersive as possible. Everything in Valhalla feels well crafted to make a fantasy scenario feel as real as it could possibly be. There is one case I can remember of a repeated asset using the bar, but I didn't even notice it until I just decided to take in the environment of the bar. I'm not saying it's hard to notice, but really only catches your eye if you're not paying attention to it. Not to mention, the characters mostly block it. The way interfaces load up is very reminiscent of scan lines of CRT displays, which emphasizes the retrofuturism design that I think the developers were looking for here. But it doesn't capture the same ideas found in the 80s and 90s. The game actually uses a lot of modern ideas. When you look at trends found in the game, you can tell there's influence from modern day trends. This most definitely helps set it apart from other games with the retrofuturism design. Now, when it comes to music in games, there is a little bit of a trend of making the music in your game not noticeable, but rather just there to add to the atmosphere. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but unless your soundtrack is absolutely amazing in that atmosphere like ukulele, it just comes off as white noise. Well, Valhalla does something I really like, and that is create music that would be listened to in Glitch City. This adds to the atmosphere while still creating a standout, noticeable music. The music in the game is excellent, just listen to the third track of the second round album. All of the music from my knowledge, which isn't much of course, is made by Garode, which hats off to him, I don't think I've ever added so many songs from a game soundtrack to my Spotify playlist before. It adds to the world even more considering that there is a character who is a pop star you will interact with. You can listen to her music in game as well, such as your love is a drug. Personally, I enjoyed all the music in the game, from the more subdued songs to the more exciting and catchy songs. Everything comes together in a design that is well executed and an absolute pleasure to look at while still retaining that retro 32-bit design. This game definitely shows that it's the artist who makes a masterpiece and not the tool he or she uses. Gameplay in Valhalla is, from what I can tell, used mostly to break up dialogue and create ways for multiple endings. You are a bartender, so all you do is mix drinks and serve them. It seems really boring at times, but you can sometimes change the dialogue simply by serving a different drink than what was ordered, which is useful later on in the game. Or, if you pay attention, you can serve a customer a drink they really wanted. It's a good way to break up stretches of rating while providing a reward for players who pay attention. Now, of course, this is a job, so Jill does get paid, which helps her pay her bills. 
something you do have to manage. Keeping track on bills is important of course, but if Jill doesn't get something she wants then she'll have trouble focusing at work, which means Anna will show up that day, but I'll get to that in the story section. Gameplay is very much bare, but as I said earlier, this is technically a visual novel so it's heavy on story and not much else. The gameplay that there is though is okay and serves as a nice way to break up from all the reading. There isn't much to talk about in terms of its gameplay, so let's just get to the real big one, story. So slight spoilers ahead, though nothing that is game changing, just character descriptions as well as some minor events. So if you want to play this game completely blind, then skip to the time on screen. Alright, is everyone here who wants to be here? Then let's talk about the story. I've seen people say that the story is written clumsily, which I think the reason for that is a drop subplot. Throughout the game you'll see Anna. She appears any time the player doesn't buy what Jill wants that day, and on certain days. She also appears at the beginning to set up the game. She breaks the fourth wall quite a few times and can read Jill's thoughts. The problem is, it kinda doesn't go anywhere. Jill thinks that she's just hallucinating Anna, but another Lilum, Lilums are sentient robots by the way, can see Anna, while no one else other than Jill is able to. This could be potentially setting up a sequel or something of the sort, but it just sticks out so much as just being underdeveloped, or just an excuse to break the fourth wall. Especially in a story full of well-developed characters and events. That's not to say that Anna isn't a well-developed character, but rather that she is just underutilized. The story overall is quite grounded and well-devised. The story mostly focuses around the development of the world and the characters that reside in it, which helps it as the main plot of the story basically lives and dies off the fact that you are invested in the characters or not. Many of the conversations in the game actually sound like authentic conversations, which in a world where throwing millions of dollars at a game produces this... Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. ...level of quality writing, it's funny that blocks of text that are well fleshed out and can be better at making a story feel more immersive than two people actually speaking and looking at each other with their cold, dead eyes. Who would have thought I'd actually be saying that the passion and care of developers with a low budget would be better at making a world than the mindless drones with endless money would be? Who could imagine? For the 1% of you that don't understand what sarcasm is, that was a joke. But it really is sad to say that a small indie developer is better at a world development in stories than the people who get paid thousands to do exactly that. The game's story is in general just feels human. The characters behave just as real human beings would. At least outside of a few oddballs here and there, but considering those oddballs are fucking robots, a very few robots I may add, I think it's okay that they hit the uncanny valley. There are robots who question the meaning of their existence in a very natural, well-developed way. Compared to other games that hit you with the subtlety of a brick, it's nice to see someone knows how to write stories in games. There is something to say about the characters found in Valhalla. The characters are very diverse and all come off as being realistic, as if they could actually exist in our world. From your homosexual biker dude to robot sex workers who look like a child, okay maybe that one would be really hard to find, you'll find no lack of diversity in this game when in terms of characters. Like a normal bartender, you meet a plethora of different people as well. The main plot is focused on Jill, but you'll meet a multitude of people along the way, and you'll learn about the experiences and problems as well. Just as any good bartender, you start learning about the people who frequent your bar, how they know each other, what they do, what their favorite drinks are, and etc. Most characters are interesting and have very well fleshed out backstories, so it oftentimes is always a joy to listen to their past. Even if some of them are assholes who should be put down in the backyard and then buried 300 meters under the sea. Yes, I'm looking at you Donovan, the representation of the paparazzi. I get it, you're a cynical, heartless bastard, but can you stop being one for maybe two seconds? Or would that kill the asshole vibe you got going? Most of the game takes place in the bar, but there are sporadic times where you'll find yourself somewhere else. This typically doesn't happen until later on in the game, but it's really only done when Jill takes her break and talks to someone. Our for major events are after. These moments are absolutely filled to the brim with character development, and before I forget, the world is also remarkably evolved. 
Even though the game likes to remind you that it's not the main focus of the game, the setting purely exists as context and to help give a place in society for the characters in the game. But what is there is fleshed out pretty well, from a corrupt mayor to all of the other problems of Glitch City, a lot of thought went to how the environment plays into the characters. Valhalla is a game that deserves a lot of praise in both quality of the story and how it's delivered. It's an impressive feat to make someone so absorbed into the game with just sprites, backgrounds, and text. Everything about the game from the introduction to the end is such an engrossing and enjoyable experience. By the end of the game, you'll still have questions about some characters and events, but it has a lot of clues to piece it together. The story is both intriguing throughout and is a satisfying end to a game, which lasts about 15 hours. The gameplay is simple and basic, but it helps keep the pacing of the game while still keeping the game immersive. The art style of the game is done extremely well and works with the retro features and design. This game blends excellent storytelling and amazing character design together to deliver one of the best stories from a game that I've ever had the pleasure of playing. Overall, there is little to fault Valhalla on, but one thing must be said. If you're looking for a game that is just dumb fun or gameplay focused, you will not find it here as the plot covers some rather philosophical subjects and is very story heavy. Beyond that though, the story is enthralling and the delivery is well done. It's very obvious that the devs had a lot of passion for this game, and that's commendable when it seems like the majority of the industry is just there to make a profit. The game is only $15 and isn't too long at all in my opinion. I would highly recommend you play it if you're interested in story based games or if you like dystopian futures as you'll find plenty to love here. This game has made it to my top 5 games of all time and I will recommend this to as many people as I believe this game is so unique and interesting that most, if not all people, with an interest in story should play this. I love Valhalla so much that I had to literally not talk about it for like a week or so. That way I didn't gush about the game to everybody I knew. Maybe most people don't think that this game is as good as I'm making it out to be, but I'm confident that with a 97% overall rating on Steam, I'm not the only one.